right, we'll take a look now, measure by measure, at Jeff Sturgeon, the melodic version. So let's take a look at measure one first. A couple of unique, uh, fairly unique things about this measure. We're starting out with just a little short strum on the lower strings and that's a little unique for uh, our style thus far in our studies uh, then we're just doing some standard stuff one thing I want to stress is it's a good idea to one I would use my second and third fingers to play the fifth frets on the first uh, on the second and first strings here and I would also make sure I just place both of those down right at the beginning. See there, I've already got them down. Both of them are in place. That'll help you get through that measure more smoothly. Let's take a look at measure two. Nothing crazy there. Uh, make sure to follow along with my fingering. Use your pinky for that 7th fret note. That'll keep you closer to your original position. It'll be easier to shift back. Um, the third measure on the first line is the same as the first. And that'll take us into the first measure, second line. taken my 30 days to better banjo course or some of my other lesson packs or lessons then these kind of motions are really familiar to you a little hammer on drop thumb pull off hammer on uh, that takes us into the second measure of this line though which might be unfamiliar to you if you hadn't noticed already if, if you're not familiar with this tune Jeff Sturgeon uh, this is what they call in the in the biz, a crooked tune. And by that, what's generally being referred to is that the parts of the tune uh, don't line up in a standard way. So your, your normal fiddle tune will have two parts. Usually the A part has eight measures and the B part has eight measures. Um, sometimes those are halved and you have four measures for each part. Um, occasionally you'll come up with, with a tune that has some extra measures uh, has an odd number of measures in a certain part, or in this case you'll notice we have what could be cons considered a half measure. We have this extra measure that I've uh, expressed as a measure of 2-4 time. So a measure that's in 2-4 as opposed to 4-4 four, four time is just going to have two beats in it. So we have these extra two beats that don't quite fit into the whole scheme of things. So that's what's happening here. So if, if you're unfamiliar with time signatures and stuff you can ignore those those numbers that look kind of like fractions on your tab you can ignore those and just follow along with the tab but that's what's happening here and that'll also kind of explain why this tune uh, takes a little while for most people to wrap their head around if you have trouble playing this whole tune by the way after you learn the ins and outs make sure you give it a lot of listens until you can kind of hum that melody to yourself and that'll help you keep track of this otherwise uh, fairly elusive melody okay enough blabbing let me play for you the very simple uh, second measure of the second line so you see that ends our first part so it's only five measures long the fifth measure is only half as long as the previous ones and then we repeat so you go ahead and repeat all that and then we get into that, our B part, and our B part only happens one time, there's no repeat to it. And it starts right here on the third measure, second line. Really straightforward stuff. And we go to the third line, first measure, it's the same thing. Now 
for our second measure on this line. And now we'll take a look at the third measure. Nothing too new, pull off, hammer on, basic strum. So that's the whole B part there, and like I said, we don't repeat that, so we move on to the C part. This is a three-part tune.